the scenery in Florida is so much better. On our way to get our Florida driver's license, are you excited? Oh, I'm excited. Get our mug shot, I mean our picture taken for that. So, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so we are now Florida drivers. So, there's mine. There's Tammy's. So I look a little bit more like, more like a mug shot than hers does. Hers is gonna look better than mine anyway. But uh, so now officially, if I'm in the news, I can be referred to as Florida man. Next stop is Cracker Barrel. Tammy has to have apple butter. And uh, so we're running out here. Then we're going to go over to the Citrus, uh, excuse me, the Harvest Citrus Center. Uh, check it out. We're going to get some fresh orange juice. The orange juice down here is unbelievable, of course. I mean, it's like out of this world good. I, I can't even explain it. If you haven't had like fresh squeezed orange juice in Florida, there's nothing like it. So we're going there next to pick up some of that and see what else they have. It's a pretty big place. I understand they have a lot of stuff there. So we're going to check that out and, uh, and then uh, probably head back to the house. Okay, so I have a story that is kind of falls under will be funnier later in life, but it's also uh, kind of, I don't know, I don't, you'll get the story, you'll get it when I finish the story. So we came back down to Florida, as you saw, and uh, the last last month we saw it had this problem a little bit, and then we definitely have it now because it is full blown summer here. Uh, we're actually got a tropical storm warning this weekend, uh, so fun there uh, with the weather. But um, one of the things we were struggling with is the air conditioning keeping the place cool. Uh, it's it's a cinder block building. It's a standalone building that's still a condo. Kind of hard to explain, but it's kind of like a house, a two story house, and uh, it's you know it's cinder block and drywall and, and siding, and that's it. And so there's no insulation in the walls. It's two story. I'm thinking, oh, the upstairs is harder to cool than the downstairs. It's been so hot. By the end of the day, four or five o'clock, it's like 82 degrees upstairs, and then trying to go to bed at night, and it's hot and maybe by the morning it's cool again and it starts all over so it's just been a battle we've had somebody that to look at air conditioning they're like yeah it seems to be working okay it's doing what it's supposed to do and uh it was a little bit low on freon so we fixed that and it did help a little but not enough uh i tinted the windows on the upstairs because we're facing east and west and that helped a little bit so I do all these things looking into getting uh, spray foam insulation in the annex is like four thousand dollars uh five four to five thousand dollars uh, and uh, you just do all these things to try to cool it down upstairs enough to where I can work and we can sleep better at night and things. And uh, stay with me, I promise this is going somewhere. Um, and come to the conclusion that these places were probably built knowing that most people who buy them don't stay here in the summer because they're from the north and uh, or they go north or whatever. Um, and uh, so we're going to be here all summer and kind of struggle. And uh, so being who I am, I just can't give up. So we came down this time and I had the plans to fix some of it. I rerouted a couple vents downstairs to the upstairs and got more airflow and that helped. It made it a lot more tolerable at night and things, but still not quite there. Uh, then we got a power bill. Our power bill was just astronomical. Our power bill here for a month, we weren't even here and had the thermostat on 78 was like 50% more than it was when we were back in Louisville in a bigger, in a bigger, much bigger home and everything. And so nothing made sense when we came back down. 
power company said, well, you must have a problem. Yeah, yeah, you got something wrong. You got to buy a hot water heat or something like that. And I, so I was just so frustrated. I'm like, oh, what does the power company know? So I started digging and man, you know, I had somebody, like I said, had somebody have to look at it and we did all this work and talked to the power company and it's different things. And I just wouldn't give up on it. And in my troubleshooting, I found out that the breaker on the outdoor compressor, the AC compressor, was really hot in my breaker box. And uh, so I got my temperature gun, checked it, and it was pretty hot. You know, didn't really want to touch it too long. And uh, there was no reason for that, so that you know, no obvious reason. So I ran to Lowe's and bought a new one, replaced it, popped it in. Within like an hour, the entire electric box cooled off and everything. So it was just a bad breaker, okay? But it, when I took it out, it was so hot, I could barely touch it. And I checked it, it was 158 degrees. And, uh, you know, that was the kind of thing that I thought, wow, if I had not found that, that's a fire waiting to happen. That's an electrical fire because it, it wouldn't be far from combustion at that point. And, and once that breaker starts to break down, well, then you have an electrical arc with that higher voltage and that's your fire. And uh, that's how that happens a lot of times in electric boxes. So uh, anyway, I fixed that and uh, was like, wow, you know, that was kind of weird. And it didn't seem to change anything with the air conditioner or anything like that. And so I watched the, and, and our, the power company here has live statistics on your power bill. So like the next day you can see hour by hour power usage and it didn't change much. And I thought, hmm, you know, I, th you know, I thought for sure it might change because it was hot and that's bleeding electricity. And no, didn't, did not change any. And I checked the electric box was still cool. And uh, so I wouldn't give up on it all weekend, kept working on it. Power company told me, that uh, they apparently have smart meters here, which was quite impressive, and they can tell everything that's using your power and has to do with the frequency that's going through the power lines. And um, they said that you, we, we can't tell what more than half of your power bill is being used by. We can tell that your air, your air conditioning is using this, your refrigerator is using this much, and so on. They said, but we can't tell what more than half of your power bill is for, so you have a problem somewhere, we need to send someone out. And so I kept investigating. I finally found my meter. You, know, you have all these thoughts of, is someone leeching off of my power, you know, and has tapped into it or whatever, uh, all these kind of things. And uh, so we tr you know, check everything out. Everything's fine. I can't find any problems. And I'm looking at, uh, I decide to, to try to get some more detail. So I bought this thing and installed it on the electric panel that, uh, there's two uh, inductors that clip on the main power line that comes in and then you clip uh, sensors on every wire on every breaker and then it'll tell you which ones are using all the power. The first few I clipped on were the uh, furnace, the air conditioner compressor and the stove and so on. I plugged those in and as soon as I did that, the very first one I saw was the furnace power was using the most electricity. So, make a long story short, for whatever reason, our air conditioner was running and the heating elements were on, so we were, we were basically warming our air conditioning air. And uh, once I, so I disconnected those, and long story short there is the house is all cool now. But, at the end of the day, what it made me realize is I thought, you know, I went through all of this troubleshooting, all of this frustration, work, sweat, blood, <laughs> um, never get alcohol in your hands after working with sheet metal. Uh, and, you know, I couldn't get anywhere with it. You know, you probably spent a thousand dollars on materials and tools and things since I've been here this trip to, to try to fix the problem. And, uh, it, and, and the, the actual problem of the heating elements being on, what was not, that was the problem. But at the end of the day, what happened in the middle with the breaker that was overheated, 
had nothing to do with this entire ordeal. That breaker controlled the compressor on the air conditioner outside, and it was a bad breaker. It wasn't being overdrawn or anything. And um, those are the kind of things that happen when people don't know any better. And, you know, I, I just wouldn't give up on it. That's just who I am. There's no brick walls. I just got to figure it out. I got to keep going until I find the answer. But to think that all of this problem and frustration, if none of that had happened, this condo would have burnt to the ground with without us in it and possibly our neighbors think about that and what led all of this to happen and led me to find that problem that no one else discovered hmm. that makes for a long day <laughs>